All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to uh, get started with our September uh, 24 Board of Directors meeting for the Delta Amateur Radio Club. Um, and I would ask if I could get our Secretary Perry, if you could give us a quick roll call and call us to order. I sure would appreciate it. Absolutely. President Joe Plunk. Present. Vice President Tyler Henley. Present. Secretary Perry Hayes, present. Treasurer Jim Martin. I am here. Director of Training Joe Lowenthal. I know he's on the Zoom. I can see him. Director of Programs John Reiners. Present. Director of Meetings and Special Events Scott Adams. Here. Director of Publications Mike Harrison. Present. Repeater Trustee Dan Fleek. Here. Public Information Officer Adam White. Here. Immediate Past President Ty McMahon. I'll show Ty as absent. Mr. President, we do have a quorum. Thank you, Perry. Do appreciate that. Uh, so let's move into uh, new business. Um, I do want to just as a quick opening statement, just say thanks to everyone that made Huntsville a rousing success. We had a good crowd that attended um, some fun activities and a lot of people. And it was a fun bus ride. Look forward to doing that again. Uh, and maybe we can uh, look at some other activities in the future. So we'll, with that, um, let's talk about our past board minutes. So I'll toss that over to Perry. Or I was going to ask you about this, Joe. Um, those minutes are published in Sparks, and they are um, the club votes on those and approves those. So I guess as to the board of directors meeting minutes from August, I would just move that we um, – Approve those as published in Sparks. All righty. So uh, I want to take over. Really this is yeah. No, no, that's fine. Uh, and really, that this is just to discuss because I know we, you circulated the minutes, and it's just a discussion of the minutes. So I appreciate that motion made to approve the minutes as published in Sparks uh, by Perry and seconded by who wants to second that one? I'll second it. I'll second it. All right, Mike seconded that. So all in favor, say aye. 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 All right, that carried. All right. Um, there was some uh, minutes. Can you hear me now? There was a small. Yay. Yes, sir. Okay. There oh, we go. Oh, yeah. Right. See you too. I don't know everything. what I did, but. Welcome. You're cooking with gas now. Got everything sorted out. Yeah. Glad to have you on board with video and audio. Um, uh, Perry, I know that you circulated some minutes and there was a discussion of point around an edit. Do we want to talk about that real quick? Yes, sir. I uh, circulated my proposed minutes of the September membership meeting. I did get an email. Do you mean from... August? Yes, I'm sorry. Do you mean... <laughs> That's okay. I did get a uh, I did get an email from Joe Lowenthal. I had left off his entire report uh, during the board member reports. Uh, Joe did talk about his technician class license class. He talked about how six of the members of the class had taken their technician exam and passed. He also remarked that the one of those six. Um, members of the class took their general class license test and also passed. Joe also made some remarks about the bus trip to Huntsville. He gave everyone an update on the fact that the bus was leaving at 630, that it was going to arrive before the nine o'clock drawing, that it was going to leave after the uh, 
main prize drawing and get back to Germantown Baptist Church around uh, 7.45 p.m. So I did add those uh, two uh, matters into the minutes. And I would just move that we accept those uh, as amended or as edited. Uh, all right. So, Perry, thank you for that. So there's a motion to approve our general membership meetings as Perry just detailed with the edit. Uh, is there a second for that? I'll second it. Uh, all right, Tyler was thumbing up on that. I'll give him the second on that. Or Mike, Mike approved that second. Don't, so either one it don't matter to me. No worries. Uh, so there's a motion to approve our membership meeting minutes for publication. Uh, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, no opposed. All right. Thank you, Perry. Thank you. Any additional uh, updates or minute-related topics for you, Barry? No, sir. All right. Uh, we'll segue into, real quick, membership renewals and new applications. I have a question on right. Jacob Sharp being non-new uh, waiver. Uh, he was not in one of the classes. And, and I think Jim said he did not have him marked as ARRL membership. And that's part of the criteria is you have to have ARRL membership. Okay. I was, I was not, I was not there at the time that that uh, application was dropped off, if I remember correctly. Um, so I was, Unless some, somebody informed me that he was in your class, so I, or that they thought that you were, he was in your class. So if that's uh, not the, if that wasn't the case, then I guess I'll eat that. Did he? Uh, so he was not in in your technician class at all, Joe. No. Okay. And it, he marked that he was not an AWRL member, and that's part of the criteria. Is uh, if you've in the class an ARRL member, you can get the balance of the year free. Okay. That's that is um, to encourage people to get ARRL membership. Yeah. Certainly. Okay. Well, that, that that's um, on you. Me, know, if you. No worries. I'll be glad to split that with you if you like. I'll also try to catch him at the, if he shows up at the membership meeting, if you'll remind me or if someone sees him, let's just ask him if he doesn't mind chipping 10 bucks into the pot. Okay. That seems reasonable. Any other uh, discussion yeah. around new members and renewals? Yeah. The other one was uh, Norm Rodriguez. Um, uh, when, when I arrived late to the meeting, um, his application was also there along with a check for $65. And in the memo, it stated uh, that it was for the remainder of 2024 and all of 2025. So that would have only been $30. And his check was written for $65. Um, mm. I, did not, I did not catch up with him before the end of the meeting. So um, I don't know if anybody else had spoken with him and, and had heard what the extra $35 was for, if it was a donation. If not, I will. Uh, I do not know. Okay. We greatly appreciate the donation for a new DMR repeater. <laughs> just kidding. Well, just to, just to be, just to be fair, I'm going to reach out to him and ask him uh, what the intention was of the additional 35 if that was just a mistake or if he meant for that to, to go towards something else and um, and give him the opportunity to uh, reclaim his $35 if that's the case. That seems very fair and appropriate. Um, with right. that being said, we I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, so I will, I, I may have a change to um, you know, that, that will be reflected in next month's treasurer's report, um, depending on what 
the uh, response is to that $35 inquiry, and um, and then the addition of the $10 for uh, for Jacob Sharp's um, uh, application for this year. And I don't even have Jacob Sharp uh, signed in on the, the sign-in sheet that I can see. Okay. Yeah, and um, and Jacob didn't uh, he didn't have his his call sign on the application. I looked him up on QRZ and and got his new call sign because I think he must have just uh, taken the test at the last. But yeah, he did. Meeting. Okay, he it uh, he took his tech with us, and uh, he had call sign not yet, so he was one that passed in August. Okay. All right. Did we have any renewals of memberships? Because I noticed all of these are new. Nope. They are all new. No renewals. All right. That's to be celebrated. Yeah. That is a celebration. All right. Uh, is there a motion to approve our new members? I make a motion that we approve all these members as listed. All right, John's made the motion. Is someone willing to step up and second that one? Uh, Dan Fleck, Fleek. I always say that bad, sorry. I second. Uh, Dan, Dan is seconding that. So all in favor, please say aye to approve our new members. Aye. Aye. All right, motion carries. All right, let's move into our treasurer's report. All right, who would like to speak to this? Just kidding. <laughs> all right, so for the month of August, uh, can y'all hear me all right, first of all? Yes, sir. Okay, all right, very good. All right, so for the month of August, uh, we started the month off with uh, $21,725.86 in our checking account. We had uh, $2,652 added uh, in deposits. We had checks written in the total amount of $3,420.78, bringing us to an ending balance at the end of August of $20,957.08. Um, for our, our deposits, we had $95 in uh, new membership dues. We had a check, or sorry, we had um, Three deposits for bus fares and one for one for fourteen hundred ninety-seven dollars. That includes the twelve hundred dollar donation that we received or that Joe received. Uh, another bus fare for three seventy-two, and then a final uh, deposit of another two hundred forty dollars in bus fares. So that was a total of two thousand one hundred nine dollars. And then at uh, at Huntsville, there were equipment sales that totaled four hundred forty eight dollars, bringing us to a total of two thousand six hundred fifty two dollars in deposits between the other deposits and the membership fees. Um, so that matches up with our checking account. And then the checks written, we had one check written to Neshoba for our half of the uh, field day ex food expenses. Uh, the amount of $187.17. We had the check written to Klein Tours for the bus fare, in the amount of $2,575 even. A check in the amount of $406.61 written to Dan Fleek for reimbursement for the purchase of an antenna at uh, Methodist North. That was purchased from DX Engineering uh, by Dan, and so we reimbursed him. And then the last check was written to the Huntsville Ham Fest for the amount of two hundred fifty-two dollars, and that's for the admission uh, for all the all the uh, attendees of the bus trip. So that's a total of three thousand four hundred and twenty dollars and seventy-eight cents, and that matches up with our checking account. So we are balanced. Then Just we to have. Note that Yes. That the Huntsville uh, admission was at twelve dollars and not the fifteen dollars. That uh, uh, 
my, the court oh. guy I coordinate with got it passed to, to allow us to do it at twelve dollars. Oh, very good. That was very That's generous. Very good. All right, then we have our two um, small business CDs. One, uh, the amount of or the current um, amount of that is five thousand three hundred three dollars and forty cents. That one's coming up to uh, mature it in January of 25. And then we have another one in the amount of $11,437.52. And that is maturing in November of this year. I also received, I'm sorry, let, let, me, let me stop there. Um, any questions regarding our checking account or our uh, certificates of deposit? I don't have any questions. Uh, okay. I would ask everyone to to kind of think about. Um, we will have to have a discussion in November regarding that uh, that small business CD that's coming up in November. So kind of think about uh, that. Kind of starting about that to, to think around that um, just ahead of time. Okay. All right, and I will I'll gather. Um... Uh, figures regarding what is available to us for um, for renewal. Uh, see if there's any any new uh, or any uh, any promotions or anything that we might want to look at. So I'll get for get the uh, figures for various uh, terms. Okay. And I also received um, an email from Mr. Lowenthal. Um, for Huntsville bus trip expenses. And um, so there's, you know, between uh, drinks and snacks and Danvers biscuits, and then the tip for the bus driver, uh, there's a total of $312.38 that I will um, need to reimburse Joe for. So I will bring the checkbook to our membership meeting next week and we can take care of that business if that's that's agreeable. Sure. One question yeah. on that real quick, Jim. Yes, sir. Uh, what does that bring what does that bring our total bus trip expenditures to including Klein at Huntsville admission and that amount to because I didn't have I wasn't writing this down to total You know what? App. I knew you were going to ask me that. Unfortunately, I was not prepared for the answer. Here to give you the answer. <laughs> um Let's see. Well, let's see. I do have thirty one oh eight eighty six. Yep. I yeah, believe. Three, yep. Three thousand one hundred eighty dollars and eighty six cents was the total of all expenses. So that looks like that breaks down to one hundred forty four dollars and fifty eight cents per person. Um, so thank you to whomever uh, made that sizable donation that covered the additional amount for everybody um very much so you know, I, the, you know, the, I, the, the donor that go ahead jim right i was gonna say so so between the amounts that were received in in uh in bus fare plus the donation minus the bus expense uh the ham fest entry and other expenses uh that comes to a total of $284.62 that the club um, has absorbed. No, gained. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I guess I need to rework my math. Let's return to the club. Right, $284.62. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'd rather have a gain than, than a loss. Right. Absolutely. To our anonymous donor, right. we thank you greatly for the donation that made that possible. Yeah. Uh, what I'd like to just make a quick note about uh, real quick, uh, Jim, I believe that the budgeted amount that we had for the bus trip uh, that we approved in the spring was $3,000 even. Um, I would just simply propose that we as the board use our discretionary fund to cover the little bit dip, a little bit of delta between the budgeted three thousand dollars and the hundred and hundred dollars and change that you said we were over a little bit. 
No, we were no, 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 no. We no? gained two hundred and eighty-four dollars out of it. Yeah, two eighty-four. Income was high, two hundred and eighty-four dollars higher than expenses. Okay. We got money we're, left we're over. Not over budget. Right. We're not over budget. Fantastic. Well, I, I, thank you for that clarification. That three thousand dollars is off is clear profit because we we made there were there was no deficit. Okay. Well then, uh, Jim, uh, make sure that we get those expenses reimbursed as uh, you have proposed. Uh, is there any additional, because we're within budget, are there any additional discussion items or points? Uh, I, I, have not, I have nothing else regarding that. This looks good. All right. All right. Um, I'd like to say that we would uh, entertain a motion to approve our treasurer's report. So moved. So Perry is making a motion to approve the treasurer's report as presented, and uh, that is seconded by Mike. Tyler Mike is second. seconding that. All right. Uh, Mike or Tyler seconded that. So the motion on the floor currently is to approve our treasurer's report as presented. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, Hi. Hi. Fantastic. That also covered our uh, presentation of bills for payments. Were there any additional bills that needed to be taken care of, uh, Jim? No, sir. Not at this time. Uh, Fantastic. We, we, we do have our um, our prizes that we had uh, budgeted five hundred dollars for. Uh, for the November meeting. And uh, I'd like to ask if uh, anybody had any discussion regarding that or any opposition to my beginning to uh, look at what is available for prizes for the club. If anybody had any recommendations on items? Um, Um, hang on Sorry, for just Derek. a second. Let me circle back. Let me circle back around and we'll bring that up in the, kind of the new, the new, new business the topics. Uh, I want to That's talk fine. about our meeting topics, real, uh, meeting topics real quick. Um, and then we'll get into the new business, but I did add it. So we'll circle back around. Uh -oh. Okay. Thank you. All right. John, our meeting topics for September. Present. <laughs> Well, um, a few years ago, um, Aaron Rodgers, when he was still playing with the Green Bay Packers, they got off to a really bad start. They were like one and four or something. And he came out and he said, relax. And that's what I'm saying here right now. Relax. I got this covered. Uh, but but I've had a, a couple of things crop up where I thought I was going to be able to uh, do some things and can't. So right now... Uh, the first program that I'm leaning towards is myself doing something along the lines of alternatives to using a DMR repeater. Uh, it, it, it's no secret that the uh, LET repeater is down and there are no plans whatsoever to bring that back online. DMR is one of those cool protocols where there's a plethora of ways to access DMR without actually having a repeater. And I really hope that I'm not shooting myself in the foot for something I'm passionate about later on in this meeting. But at the same time, there, there are other methods. And so I thought I, I personally would do a presentation on that. I do have some questions at, out to the National Weather Service to see what they can do or uh, uh, possibly someone that was on the Huntsville bus trip might be able to do a presentation, just talk 15 minutes about the rousing success that this bus trip was uh, in the hopes that uh, it will stay in people's memory uh, for next year. So that's what I got. Okay. I, the, the, uh, I have well, other so ideas that I can do, but... Uh, 
uh, that, that that's just what I was leaning towards as far as uh, uh, the alternatives to a DMR review. Uh, so digital modes. So would you cover also any some like uh, D Star or System Fusion or really focusing on DMR? I would focus more on DMR, but certainly the other modes come into play on a couple of the things that I would mention. You know, the obvious being hotspot. Uh, the next would be the USB stick that uh, acts as a vocoder. That can do D-Star Fusion as well. Uh, uh, but then I would also mention Droid Star, uh, which is a cell phone based uh, uh, method that I think only does DMR. Um, uh, the focus would be on DMR because that's what the National Weather Service uses, but, uh, I could, I could do my best to expand that. And... Well, it's basically alternates to DMR repeater. Right. Alternates to, to using a DMR repeater. Well, I mean, a DMR repeater is not going to give you D-Star or Fusion, so I, that's why I was really kind of wanting to say, are we really just wanting to focus it on DMR, or do we want to incorporate... Well, it, it's alternate access to DMR. And the only reason I was thinking about it was because of LET being down right now. And, um, you know, I did the National Weather Service Net the other night. I only have four check-ins, and so I want people to understand that there are other ways of checking in uh, without using RF. Okay. Kind of counter, kind of counterproductive uh, to my ultimate goals, but, uh, <laughs> but I've got feelings right, about so the National Weather Service. I'm, I'm waiting to hear back from them. Uh, I also had something on POTA, but they, uh, that person couldn't do anything on the 10th. Um, you know, I thought about doing grounding and power in your ham shack, um, thought about contesting, um, but that person had a conflict as well. Um, I do know coming up like in October, I think for the October meeting, we should do something surrounding public service because we have, uh, the weekend after that meetings, uh, the Bluff City Blues ride. So that would be a great opportunity, uh, to share some stuff there. Uh, all right all right so john we'll work on the for now we'll use a working title as we've kind of talked about we'll shape that up uh as we get closer remember one of the things to talk about sparks articles that's not slam mike at uh you know sunday afternoon at four o'clock right. with all of our sparks articles and yes i'm calling myself out on that let me jot that down um, <laughs> Let's let's try to get our Sparks articles in uh, Friday as preferred. Um, I'd love to see other people toss in a Sparks article about other things uh, that are out there. Uh, Dan, you've been doing a great job. Appreciate that. Maybe some other ideas from other directors and uh, vice presidents, et cetera, uh, about uh, articles that you'd like to see in Sparks. So that'd be fantastic. Uh, anyone want to toss in something on the Huntsville bus trip? Any volunteers? Doesn't have to be long, 10 or 15 minutes. Just uh, talk about all the things you thought were wonderful. Uh, right. I didn't get any I'll pictures other than the bus. I, yeah, I, I was going to say, I don't have a ton of pictures. Um, I've got a couple, um, but uh, John, I can pencil in something if nobody else penciled in. I can do it. Okay. Who was who was that? Adam. Adam. Yep. Okay. Adam. Thank Fantastic. You so much. Uh, might not count on it if I, if if I get a reply back uh, uh, from someone else. I'm waiting to hear back from. Uh, we could forgo that, but um, but yeah. Just... And you Wait. mentioned Poda. I can do a Poda talk too. Oh, would you like to do that? Yeah, I'm not a Poda god or anything, but. I know a little bit about it. Okay, yeah. Um, why don't we do that? Okay. Oh, so do you want to do Huntsville bus trip or POTA or POTA or what? How would you want to? I can do POTA and just uh, talk about Huntsville for one minute. 
Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate that. I got I got you down for that. And then I'll do the uh the alternatives to uh accessing DMR without a repeater. Cool. I got about four different options I can demo. What do you use? An open spot or a Pi Star? I was going to do Pi Star, but if you want to bring your open spot, I'll be happy to call on you, and I promise I won't give you a Pringles can with a spring-loaded snake in it. Sure. <laughs> give me something else. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I got an open spot for. As, as long as he doesn't give you the handshake with the clown buzzer. <laughs> I do have some wind-up chattering teeth. Okay. Moving right along. Yep. Moving right along. Right, thank you all. All right. I think we got our topics uh in the fully in the firmly in the we are going to trust uh, category. So we're squared away on that. Uh thank you, John. Thank you, Adam. Um we'll uh take a moment. Um I forgot to update this. Um Dan, you want to give us a quick update on our work? Uh, at Methodist North and the progress that we've seen there? Yeah. <laughs> There's progress and digress or Congress. Um, so Joe and I went out there, put up the brand new antenna. Um, got everything tuned up good, awesome. 1.2 SWR plugged it into the radio SWR of five. What the heck? So we swapped the coax that was going to go to the 220 antenna and uh, it worked. So there's something wrong with the one of the coaxes. So we stole the 220. Um, the APRS worked like, uh, like a champ. Sometimes uh, getting up to 150 miles away on transmission, receiving 10 to 15 miles. And then Thursday, it quit working. <laughs> I, I think it may have gotten damaged in the storm again. So got to go back out there and see what happened. Um. So it's always something, but we'll need to figure out what's wrong with the other half inch hard line. And I, I suspect it's just connector that's loose. Okay. Do we, you know, I noticed that we've got some surplus half inch, uh, coax at the eight, two site. Do you think we have enough there to potentially use if we had to replace that run at Methodist North? Yeah. We probably would. I don't think that run is very long. Okay. Um, but I'm going to have to get a couple of uh, kits and a half-inch hardline cutting kit. And I'll re we'll okay. try replacing the end first. Right. Uh, any other repeater updates you want to bring on the table? Um, we want to save the Brunswick site for a at the end of the meeting, or well, we um, do you want to just talk that. about it in general, or if you want to talk about it in general, and then we can segue into some of the new business topics that have more to incorporate. Oh, yeah, uh, just a brief. Uh, the 8.2 seems to be working. Sometimes it's still crackling and desensing some, mainly the people on the edge. Um, I talked to Ken Hunt a little bit about it, and uh, he he suggested how to do a uh, desense test. And one of the things that he said was... Um, Hey, you sure it's not your radio, your, uh, your repeater. 
So, well, we hadn't considered that. Um, there was an FR3000 in the cabinet in the repeater room. And so I took it back to the house. I powered it up this afternoon and it says 146.82. So apparently it was at least tried. It might've been part of the great uh, issues that we had over the last five years. They may have pulled it off site. I don't know. So we may have a good FR3000 that we can swap out and try. Um, I assume we'll have to have some more testing on that before we know for sure. Yeah. On that, that FR3000 that's on the bench. Yeah, I've, um, Adam got the software for it, didn't you? I think he told me that. Yeah, I haven't played with it. Um, I, I think I sent you a Google link drive or Google drive link, but we can yeah. try again. And then, um, so I'm going to see if I can find a programming cable and either purchase or borrow an ICOM mic. I don't know if anybody's got ICOM, extra ICOM mic. Wrap the round one or the RJ45 one? RJ45. Hmm. I think any of the icon mics will do they're not real expensive so i can get one if we don't have any um give that one a try uh and the rest is uh pictures and more detail Hey, you have it. Do you need to or want to share any of that? I can sh stop sharing and let you share if you need to share something. Yeah, let's just go into it. All right, you should be able to share. I always use Teams, I can't ever find the share button. Where is the share button? Oh, there it is. Should be down at the bottom. The one that says Great shares. <laughs> the sharing the host is not allowing multiple presenters for the sharing for this meeting. You you clicked you clicked faster than I could click allow. Try again. Okay, let's see what screen am I doing here? All righty. Guess you can see that. Yes, sir. All right. So Joe and I went out to the site Friday afternoon and we played around. Uh, it was a good time. It was a frustrating time. So we decided that we were going to take a look at the old 8.2 antenna and coax. So we hooked up to the rig experts and man, cool. 1.2 SWR. Awesome. That looks neat. Huh, cool. Wonder what kind of problem they were seeing. Oh, well. Hey, Dan, you want to hook up your HT? Sure. So I screwed my HT onto the end of the antenna and keyed up 145.45 downtown, full quieting. Awesome. Pulled the radio off, hooked the rig expert back up, SWR3. What the heck? That's the way it was the rest of the afternoon. Uh, so we ran a TDR on the cable, and it shows the cable out to 100 feet with no shorts. There's like a little like dip squig. Lee, we think that's probably where the coax makes the turn up the tower. And um, at this point, we've got a problem at the end of the coax. It can either be 
the tower in connector. It can be the jumper. It could be an issue with the antenna. Something came loose on it. We don't know. It probably might need to put a new end on it and a dummy load. And, and, and I say doing that. So we got lucky in the channel 24 engineer, Rod Hill was there and we talked to him a little bit and he thinks they may be doing a tower climb this month. So we may be able to see if we can put a new end on it or put a dummy load on it and see if it works. Okay. Um, and like I say, I, I found the FR 3000 in the cabinet and it powers up. Um, so, so real quick, a couple of questions, a couple of questions on that, Dan. Okay. Real quick. Uh, so that's the inch and five eighths coax going yes. up the hill to 500 feet. Um, in preparation for a potential tower climb, what parts and pieces do we need to have on hand? Or would you recommend that we have on hand um, in case they go up and climb the tower? I don't know if we can solve all problems in a single tower climb. Um, at a minimum, it would be nice to replace the end of it and stick a dummy load on there. And then if it seems to work okay and handle the weather, then we may call it good and have a climb to potentially um, swap the jumpers with the seven eights. I, uh, question if we put a dummy load on that, won't that take the repeater out of service for a while? No, because there's the no old, repeater, not the old, uh, coax. Okay. Yeah, it's the old one. Gotcha. Well, we're kind of looking this is, at this. This is kind of leading up to, um, can we reuse that? And is that a better coax to use loss wise? Than the seven eighths hard line that the four forty three dot seven is um, connected to. Okay, I got you, Dan. When you yes. go up on the one and five eighths, wouldn't you put the dummy load on it and see how it reads as it is, and then you could change the connector. To, yeah, you know if it's bad. Well. well but the, the, the question that I was asking, Dan, is uh, what we need to have in hand at the right. time and be prepared for the tower climb is we need to have an inch and five-eighths end in our hands, and those aren't just something that you pop out of a pocket. Right. Um, um, so uh, if we're anticipating that there might be a climb, I think we need to order an inch and five-eighths coax end and have it in hand to send up the tower for the tower crew to potentially replace the one that's up there, not use it, but use the dummy load first. And then if it doesn't, doesn't pass that, then we'd say, okay, go ahead and replace the end. Uh, that's kind of where I was headed with that. I think that's what you were headed to Joe as well, but. Yeah. Well, the yeah. expenditure for that end, I'm sure is far less than paying for a tower climb. So if we can piggyback and, and get a free tower climb out of the deal, I'm all for it. Well, it probably won't be free, but it'll be much less than. Gotcha. Yeah, my, I'd love it my... for it to be free, but I think we'd probably have to pay something. Oh, that's fine, but it's still you're saving in the long run. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's pro. I think last time, uh, Barry did something like that where they were climbing for another reason, and. They took a couple hundred bucks. Might be a little bit more, but like like you say, it's going to be a lot cheaper than a three thousand dollar or two thousand dollar climb. Okay. Um, and, and just to do due to the weird way it's behaving, where Joe and I was like, man, it's one point two SWR, 
and that's on two different rig experts. Joe brought his, I brought mine. So we, we independently verified everything we did. Uh, I, I just don't trust it until I've seen it run good for a while. Cause I, it's hard and I, I won't be able to, I can't pay me enough money to go up, climb that tower. I wonder if the, the end that's downstairs is, is the problem. Um, that could be possible. And we, that is a, that's a free thing. Well, that's just the cost of a connector to try. Yeah. That, but that is entirely possible. So that's probably something we ought to try too. So, I mean, so again, that would be get two of the connectors so that we have, you know, one to go up the tower and one for the bottom of the coax. Yep. And it sounds like since we're looking at potentially using some of inch and a half, excuse me, some half inch connectors as well, at Methodist Norwalk, we may grab a couple of extras of those and you could potentially send a, a half inch hard line jumper up if you wanted to, if we had some connectors to make that up. Um. Uh, before we move on, I just want to close a, a, a quick uh, point of order business. Uh, does the board have any problem with Dan getting some information on those connector costs, circulating that via uh, e the email to the board, and just letting us know what those costs are going to be? Um, he's got about $1,500 left in the repeater budget, give or take a few dimes. We, we stay under budget. Um, uh, and he lets us know that. Does anybody have any issues with that? No. Nope. No issues. Okay. Uh, the one thing that might be a, a challenge that we need to look at and talk about, just kind of real quick, and then, Dan, I'll, uh, I'll let you move into the rest of your presentation, is how do we want to handle the, the tower climb? Do we want to ask the membership to approve that as an above and beyond expense? Uh, next week, or do we want to see if we stay within the repeater budget and cover the repeater climb, excuse me, cover the tower climb out of the repeater budget, depending on what the connector costs are? I would say let's see what these connector costs are first. Okay. Yeah, I, think I think as long as, as long as we don't exceed our budget, it I don't. I don't see any reason to bring it to the, to the club unless uh, we're going to be going over. Yeah, we already had their approval on the budget. Agreed. Thank you, sir. Apologize, Dan. Feel. All right. Just doing a quick. Yeah, I'm gonna check the cost of that. DX Engineering gave me a couple of good sites to buy connectors from. Okay. So let's talk about the 443.7. Yesu DR2X running at full power. Uh, the 1X burned up because the 1X had poor cooling and heat sinking and many people across the country burned up their one X's, uh, in talking to Wes and the guys that maintain KOG, I guess they've got at least two of those fusion repeaters and they run them at full power. No problem. So I said, all right, I'm bumping up the full power. And I also was able to drop the squelch one notch. And that's the way it's been running for the last probably couple months. Um, I figured out that the antenna is probably a Comscope DB420, which is like a $3,300 antenna. It's a nice one. And I think that's what Comserve uses on their commercial repeaters. So it's a, it's about as good as it gets. I think it's a eight bay dual folded dipole. Um, I did a little bit of, um, uh, HT coverage test. Um, uh, 
I hooked my laptop up to a scanner and listened to the 443.7. Drove around to a few spots and I can get into it with an HT at 11 miles. So it seems to be working pretty good. Um, let's see if I can full screen this. And it's not full screening like I want it to. Oh, well. Um, I went through a lot of the presentations and stuff for the club and meeting minutes. And this is the platform. This here, if you zoom into it, is the new... It's the new old 8.2 antenna it's the one that barry bought as a replacement after they had all the problems before they went to the 700 feet so he left the uh he left that on there and it's a four bay dipole uh vhf antenna this is the comscope 443.7 antenna the gain on that's 11.3 db it's a very it's like a 20 foot antenna. So it's, it's very good, very good gain. It's got a little bit of electrical down tilt on it. Seven degrees helps with the point in the antenna down. So you get a little bit co coverage and you're not shooting over the top of everything. Um, so taking that in mind, I reran the splat map a little bit. And that is approximate coverage of the 443.7. Joe was having problem. Joe and I were talking last night. He was down around here. Couldn't get in too well. And that is a marginal coverage according to the map. Uh, I went out to here and I went out to here and I went out to here. And I was getting in on an HT standing outside. And there's no dropouts when I keyed up. So we've been pondering the idea of what if we did a DMR antenna or DMR repeater. Uh, and we would probably look at something like an SLR 5700 Motorola um, with an amplifier on it. Um, and the cost of getting a 50 watt repeater with a and a 100 watt amplifier is probably going to be close to the same as just buying a 100 watt amplifier and you go well why would you want a separate amp um ken does that a lot in case something takes out the amp the amp is the buffer between the outside world and the radio so if you burn out a final SWR takes something out, lightning strike, whatever. The amp will take the hit. Then he just simply disconnects the amp, bypasses it, and runs the repeater direct. Uh, so normally he runs the repeater at like two or three watts. So that, it lasts forever. Um, so you go from that kind of coverage the motorola is a lot more sensitive so this is the new coverage and it just fills in some of the iffy areas a little bit and extends the coverage out um i don't have it here but i ran a um i ran a um, profile of assuming that somebody had a this is mobile coverage, by the way. I thought, what if somebody had a 16 foot in, uh, antenna mast at their house and you get perfect coverage through the whole county? Um, if we go and switch over to the inch and five eights, it fills in a few areas. So I put a little side by side here. Seven eighths versus inch and five eighths. And there's not much difference. So I kind of put that in there to say, 
you know, is it worth the effort to spend a lot of money to try to get over to it? Um, it may fill downtown in a little bit more reliable. Um, because actually switching the inch and five eighths hard line. So if we switch to inch and five eighths, um, we would likely move the repeater over into the same room with the eight two, and we would really get only one point five dB gain. And like I say, don't trust the old inch and five eighths until I've seen it sit for a while and work. So the current coax, I feel, is at least sufficient. Um, so going to the inch and five eighths to me is not a showstopper. Um, I've talked to Ken about other options, like what about a um, RF amp? And he said, no, don't do that. Don't put it at the repeater. Um, that's kind of for a split site. You need to put the amp at the top with the antenna so that you're not repeating noise or amplifying noise. And we're not going to be able to run power up that high. Or, or maybe we can, but it's going to, like I say, we go to spending money on minimal gains. And one of the problems that I saw this happened to the LET repeater. They had a top of, uh, they had an amp up top because they have a split site or split transmit receive and lightning took out their preamp and an inline preamp turns into a D amp once it dies. And so they had to wait for a tower climb and they just took the preamp out. Um, so I'm kind of thinking along the lines of maintenance too. You know, we're we're not making money off of this, so we don't want to be spending lots of money for components that may just die in six months. Um, and just for fun, so you know, there's the other club that put in a. Uh, they've got their DMR repeater going. Um. This is not to bash them or anything. It's just to show what their coverage is. Um, and that is their coverage. And this is what we would be doing. So. Is that the Hickman County uh, ARC repeater? No, this is the... Um, this is uh, MARA's site, okay. the, the 443.25. Because KG5A has a repeater listed as Bartlett. Uh, that's a house repeater. Okay. I think he's taking his repeater. It's, it's an XPR 8400. I think that's what is in place now at the... Uh, I've actually looked at buying one of those recently just to play with. Yeah, if you get one that works, it's not a bad repeater. Uh it's it's been out of um it's it's been out of uh they haven't made them in what 10, 12, 15 years. So they're considered obsolete by Motorola. So if it breaks, you have to go buy another one off of eBay to get parts. So um, I don't want to cut to the chase here or cut you off or anything, but it's my understanding we already had club approval to do an amplifier on the 443.700. Yes. Not do that amplifier. What are we talking about doing a DMR repeater on that? Which I would love, love, love. But uh, yeah. You know. uh, I kind of bring the. I think I just say I thought I heard Dan say that he was going to say a repeater and an amp based on the yes. recommendations. Okay. Yep. Um 
and a hundred watt amp only puts about three db more out but it does help a little bit it, it seems the repeater actually listens well this one listens better than it transmits uh, steve pickle i think his previous repeater was a hundred watt amp um 100 watts seems to be a pretty good power if you can do it. Um, but yeah, I just kind of bring this to show you the technical details of what if you did a DMR repeater. Uh, a 50 watt repeater, an SLR 5700. I don't have quotes yet from Ken. Uh, he is a Motorola partner, so he can buy Motorola stuff. And it'll be legit. It'll be under, I think they got a five-year warranty when you purchase it. Um, so I don't know what his discount is yet, but I'm thinking probably around $5,000 for the repeater and the amplifier. Uh, yeah, I just wear it out. Get... And yeah, there's several SLR 5700. Looks, looks like the going rate's about three grand on those. Give or take, I don't know. I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I've seen them sometimes as low as twenty five hundred, but like I say, it's not much difference than you know, not much difference than buying it new. We save a few right. bucks. Dan, I met a Motorola partner at Huntsville, uh, who's based in Germantown, so we could shop around and use them to compete against each other if you want to get aggressive like that? Um, at least on the amplifier. I don't know if he's going to do it on the repeater, but he was doing cost, dealer cost. I, I'd say, so a couple of things real quick. Um, we're about an hour in, uh, I want to get a quick pulse check on everybody to understand, uh, are we comfortable running just a little late? Cause I think we've had a good round discussion around some things. Um, just let me know if we need to cut things short. And I think Adam's got some stuff that wants to bring. We had some other new business that we'll talk about. Um, if everybody's good continuing, we'll roll on through, but I did want to do a quick time check and then, uh, I want to bring this to a kind of a conclusion of an action plan. And if you want to tell us kind of an action plan that you'd like for us to, to support you with and take forward to the membership. I need to take like a two minute break. I promise it won't take long, but uh, nature calls. Uh, absolutely. Feel free to step away. And uh, it's, it's our son's 10th birthday today. So I'm probably about to dip. So, uh, Okay. Right. But I do like I like what I'm seeing here with Dan's presentation. Um, real quick, um, DMRP we talked about uh, that. Um, we got a couple other things that we need to talk about, kind of uh, real super quick, and then we can circle okay. back around to kind of the action plan for the DMR presentation. Um, as John mentioned, and I do remember, and I think of the board members as well, we do already, Dan, have pre-approved by the membership the quote to approve uh, as an extra expenditure the 100-watt the UHF amp that Ken quoted us. That's already approved by the membership. So that's yeah. that checkbox is checked. What we would need to ask the membership for uh, if I'm remembering correctly, and please, everybody that's on the board, please chime in. I'm not trying to say that I remember everything perfectly. We would have to ask the membership for the cost of the repeater um, as an above and beyond um, to put it on, to, to switch to that. And then there's the final piece that we'd really want to talk about that you haven't really talked about. We need some sort of connectivity for this uh, to really make it shine. Uh, and to allow us to manage it and support it offsite. Uh, so there'd be a monthly recurring cost that we would need to explore as well. Did I miss anything? Okay. No. Let me let me steal the share for a second. 
um, and go back to a couple of the topics um, to talk about real quick. And then, Dan, I promise we will circle back around and, and uh, put some uh, finality on your proposed action plan. Because I want to give Tyler an option to chime in and Adam and some others on some other things. Uh, real quick, um, our tax exempt certificate. Uh, I know, Jim, I texted you on this real quick, but if you could just do a quick status on how we stand on that, I sure would appreciate it. Yeah, so I, I did submit the application to the state, but I had not received anything. And I meant to uh, check back with the state earlier this month or earlier in August. And I failed to do that um, with other stuff that I have going on. So I've made a note to myself to uh, reach out to the state this week and, and find out what's going on, what, if there, what the holdup is, if there's something that we're missing. Uh, but I did uh, submit that paperwork to them. Yeah, because okay. on the repeater Thanks, purges sir. and stuff, that would be about a five hundred dollar savings. Absolutely, yep. we yep. De with these with these action plans that we're kind of talking about, we're definitely going to want to make sure that we have that certificate in hand. Right. Um, we'll circle back to the the DMR repeater discussion for just a minute. Mike, do you have anything on Sparks coming up? I know it's editing weekend. I'll need to unmute yourself, sir, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll be trying to work on getting that out as early as I can. Um, I did have to put my credit card into uh, GoDaddy. Um, so it's going to be uh, a little over $157 coming in November, I do believe. Uh, okay. so, so that's the only thing I know of that's coming up. When that comes, just let us know. I believe that's in the budget, so that there's not a, bit, uh, a lot of struggle on that. Just let us know when that hits, and Jim, we'll get Jim to get that taken care of as an expense. Thank you, sir. Sure. If uh, everybody, if you could send anything you want in Sparks to Mike uh, as early as you can, that sure would be appreciated. And uh, again, I'm calling myself out as being very tardy on that and going to make a better effort. Um. I want to just call out real quick nominations committee. Um, so I'm going to I need to lean into the board here. Haven't been through this process before. Um, I know it's time for us to kind of start that process. And I've talked to a few people about that. Um, so um, Perry, can you kind of bring us up to speed or do you have any observations on that real quick on the timing of that by chance? And I apologize for putting you on the spot, Perry. You're talking to the muted microphone. I was going to put Perry to sleep. Uh, when I was vice yeah. president, everybody that was on the board was willing to serve again. And so there really wasn't a lot of urgency or a lot of things that I had to do once we got that nailed down. Um, but I okay. would, I would recommend that uh, we kind of informally, I guess, uh, you know, feel everybody out, see what holes we might need to fill, you know, no reason to wait. Uh, on that and if there's anybody that does not want to come back next year I mean, they should probably reach out to to joe or tyler and just let them know um because it's real important to know what what holes need to be filled you know to have that uh in hand um as soon as possible okay um, oh, Go ahead. I'm sorry, John. Go ahead. I was going to say, when I was vice president, um, we only had like one hole to fill, if I remember right. Uh, we did form a subcommittee uh, uh, that, that was a couple of members, I think Joe Lowenthal and myself, uh, trying to find a, uh, a replacement for the director of programs at the time. 
And uh, I ended up stepping down as vice president and doing director of programs and twisted Perry's arm <laughs> to be uh, vice president. Um, that's all I remember from it. Um, yeah, then, what's the timing? I'm sorry, we got Perry. I was going to say, and then, of course, at the last minute, kind of all hell uh, broke loose last time. Yeah. Um, you know, Mary Jean had to leave. Um, Paul had to leave. And so kind of at the very uh, last minute, there was a lot of scrambling. But uh, at this time of the year, you know, when I was vice president, everything was pretty much on track. But what I remember, um, does anybody know time of year that we started looking, um, you know, because the elections were supposed to be in November. Uh, they weren't really supposed to carry on into December. So uh, really, we should be putting that word out there now and, and kind of have an idea of who we're looking at by next month. Okay. So that was the question I wanted to just to clarify. The nomination committee forms in October for no. nominations in November. No? No, September. No, like, That's now. like now. Now okay. the nominating committee, and then October is when they present the slate, so it can be the, be out for a month before the November election. Okay. Okay. So with that, I think uh, what I'll try to do is I'll poll everybody and then send some emails around, and we'll stand to the on uh, who's typically on the nominations committee. Um, it was me, Joe uh, Lowenthal, and then I asked uh, so, uh, a couple of people from our general membership. I, if, if I remember right, Terry okay. Blackwell, uh, Lima Charlie Uniform came for our LCU. She was one of them. I can't remember who the other was. Uh, it was a very small committee, okay. and we we didn't even have any meetings. We just communicated via email, uh, right. basically emphasizing the criteria that had to be met as far as attendance and things like that. But uh, Okay. So I think what I will try to do is I'll poll everybody real quick and then between now and the membership meeting, uh, put some um, uh, some detail around that and then we'll stand the nomination committee up at the general membership meeting. Is there any objection to that? And I'll have to we'll have to kind of form that via email. I apologize. Any uh, any other objections or comments on that? Look for some emails to follow on that. All right. Uh, Bluff City Blues is on the agenda, and I think that's uh, refresh my memory on that. That's a uh, October, late October event. No, October twelfth, I nope. believe. Yeah, mid October, early to mid. Okay. Okay. I think it's the twelfth, Saturday the twelfth. Yeah, it's the weekend after our uh, October membership meeting. So October 12th, okay. You may try to solicit somebody um, to talk about that for the next meeting. Uh, Steve let me know that he's not going to be able to make the meeting, so he's he usually has some words on that, but uh, we'll have to. Has anybody participated in that? I'm not one. That I has. have, has um, but Mary Jean uh, has done it multiple years and served as net control out there, uh, so I may reach out to her to see if she wants to talk about it uh, at the October meeting. Okay, at the October meeting or the meeting next week. Uh, we could, any of us could make an announcement next week. I was thinking about doing more of a, more like a presentation about doing community service like this for special events. For October? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then, uh, Jim, circling back around to your prizes for November. Yes, sir. Sorry, All right, so I, you I, had I, some... I lost. I briefly lost uh, internet, and I'm a, I'm on a alternate connection now. Oh no worries. So, so no video. No worries. 
you had wanted to start thinking about prizes for November and starting to kind of research those and look at that. So I just wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of talk about what you it has to talk about. Yeah, I was just looking for any recommendations or any any thoughts from anybody on what might be uh, a, a, a well-received uh, prize for those that have, that uh, come to the November meeting for elections. Okay. So get you guys to start thinking about things. I'll um All right. I'll I'll do uh I'll send out a I'll send out a note to everybody or an email to everybody with uh, like what the prizes were last year and approximate cost so that we can uh consider what might be in the same range so we can keep it under okay. 500. Uh, you, you anticipated my question, so I appreciate that greatly, Jim. Okay. Get certificates to a gun range. <laughs> that way we can take out our frustrations whichever way the election goes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say we could do like the Huntsville Ham Fest and the dollar whack for a whank, uh, whank, uh, whack a fang, you know, <laughs> dollar whack. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, that's kind of the op that's kind of the the most of all of our new business agenda. Um, I'll circulate some emails about positions and nominating committee, and we'll try to accomplish that by email. Um, Perry, I'll make sure that you are for sure included explicitly in that, so we can uh, record that uh, explicitly. Um, so now, Dan, I want to take a minute and circle back around real quick and try to talk through the action plan that you want to try to put together for. Um, uh, kind of your four, four, three, seven hundred plans, and that uh, and get, kind of get you an action plan and some direction on that. Well, okay. And be advised, it is it is eight o'clock. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if any, so technically, yeah. I think it'll work. Did some site surveying to see what our current did, and it's you know it's no, it's no slouch. So it's working good. Um, I had another thought. I can't remember what it is. Uh, Joe and I talked once about the coverage, and he was like, can you get any more coverage to the south? And I was like, well, let's pick the tire up and move it about eight miles south. The repeater proposed is a lot like LET's coverage, just eight, shifted eight miles to the north. It's unfortunate. Uh, number one thing is location. Uh, but people in Kyerville and Germantown, if they have a 16 foot antenna, can get into it or 16 foot tower pole something. So, my proposal is in addition to the amp, is getting a repeater for about roughly 3,500. That's my guess without a quote. Okay. Um, so, and, go ahead. And the, then the idea would be to sell it. I uh, need help selling it. I mean, I'm. I love DMR. It's the reason that I, when I got back into ham radio, that I didn't quit. Just from the connectivity and things and the interest in it, but. I want to make sure that there's others in the club that want it too, because I don't want another unused repeater. So right. I, there's, I think there's people out there that have asked me, Hey, is there a DMR repeater in town? What happened? So there's, there's people out there. Uh, Joe ran the numbers. There's only like 300 DMR users in the area, but um if only five of those became active users, it would be more active than any other repeater in town. So, um, I like it. Uh, the guys in Marion, Arkansas set one up. I've been talking with them on their talk group. Uh, they're willing, multiples. <laughs> uh, they're willing to do whatever they can for us. We may cooperate and use the same primary talk group. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of good things that could come out of it. 
So we just need to sell it at the next meeting. I won't have a budget item, I don't think. I don't know if I have a budget item or not. Ken's kind of hard to get a hold of. And kind of hard to get him to read his email sometime, but I, I think that's right. just kind of feeling out what people want to do. All right. So to kind of summarize that real quick, uh, Dan, I'm going to make sure on the membership meeting next week, um, since we've got a shorter second part of the program, the first part of our meeting, I'm going to put an agenda item uh, on that for you to have a conversation with the membership to discuss uh, the 443700 conversion to DMR and what that would entail uh, so that we can present that to the membership and kind of get their feedback. Are you okay with that? Yeah. I won't okay. dig into all the technical stuff like I did tonight, but. Fair enough. Bearing in mind when you have that conversation that we already have the 100 watt amp kind of membership approved. So we've kind yeah. of, we've got the steps kind of starting through that process. Uh, with then, that. Um, like you say, we'll, we'll need internet access with a recurring monthly cost. I think I said there's some ways to... about a T Mobile device for like $10 a month. That's what, That's what Michael's. Don't know if it would work out there or not, but worth a shot yeah the the ham weighing guys are actually using one of those to connect their ham weighing up to the internet um ryan and <laughs> michael have been paying for it out of their own pocket but yeah it's a t-mobile hot spot and one of the other things that we may have to consider and I, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna lay the ugly duckling on the on the table um, at some point, as we start bringing additional services to our membership, we may need to consider potentially having a, a potential slight dues increase. You know, it's something to consider. I'm not saying it's going to happen today or tomorrow, but it's something we might need to consider as a board. All right. Yeah. Because our, our $20 there... membership is the same as when I joined in 95. All right. Um, are there any other questions, discussions around new business, other conversations? Dan, I'll, I'll make sure that you're on the agenda for, to present that information. We'll talk through a little bit about the COAX and, uh, and all the steps, the plan, the phases that you've kind of laid out. I have that as a conversation. Any other new business that we might have overlooked? No training. We don't have any active training classes at this time? No. no. Okay. Pat Lane is in uh, Methodist University Hospital in room uh, 641 North Tower. Uh, and as of right now, nothing has progressed. He's just waiting on the doctors to try to figure out what to do. Thank you for the updates on that. I would ask and encourage everyone to send him a card, please. I know that will go a long ways. Um, Adam, do you have anything that you, I, uh, I had gotten a late note from you that you had a couple of words of updates real quick and then we'll close. Yeah. Um, so I missed the last meeting. I was uh, headed to Florida for uh, Hurricane Debbie. So let me pull this up. Uh, right before the last meeting, I got an email from Steve Frazier uh, just uh, with info on how to log into the Facebook and the YouTube. I need to get with him and Michael Knight on Facebook. Um, if anyone has a phone number ending in 5-5, five, five, uh, we're trying to recover the password. You do. Okay. We're trying to recover the password. So I'll, I'll get with Joe. I already uh, tried the email uh, route for the recovering the password on the YouTube. So, uh, that, that answered my question, but, uh, yeah, after, after I get into those, then, uh, I'll be more active. So thank okay. you. Adam, I'll, I will reach out to you after this meeting and we'll see what we can do with that. Awesome. Fantastic.
All right. Uh, any other comments, observations, or needs? Perry, if you'll roll us out. All right. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Seconded by Joe, made by Perry. Perry makes a motion to adjourn. Seconded by Joe. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you for your service, everyone. Much appreciated. Y'all have a fantastic evening. Good night, everybody. Thanks so much. Okay.